I am excited for this weekend's project. I'll be installing the uh, DMP736Q MyQ interface along with my Z-Wave garage door controller. Uh, so I recently bought my home and it came with the LiftMaster with MyQ, the Security Plus 2.0 uh, garage door controller and this fancy smart button I mean this is more than just a like a doorbell to open my my uh, a doorbell button to open my garage door so um, I've got the MyQ app on my phone it works great I can open and close my door um, but as soon as I want to integrate to Amazon you know Alexa um, geofences or anything else or IFTTT um, the MyQ app will want you to pay additional for that so um, so this button the smart button I have it is it's it's like encrypted it only works with uh, the smart garage door opener um, as soon as you try to short that out uh, like a like a normal button it will not work uh, so that is why we will need the 736Q uh, to act as another button uh, or controller or remote for that. Uh, so let's get started. So first I installed the 736Q. I was able to tie wrap that to the metal frame of the garage door opener. As you can see we have a two conductor which is the input from the controller that will be my uh, Z-Wave controller or um, a dry contact uh, connection of some sort out to the operator. So uh, this will be going to the garage door operator. Um, please note that the uh, just because the wires are red and black on this doesn't mean it connects to the red and black on here. Um, I can see I have terminals that say, uh, it's really tough to see, but it says uh, command on the circuit board and the other one says doors. Uh, so um, I do have two sensors at the doors, so the, the white and the black on the right side here will be to my, my door sensors, and then the red and the white here will be for the... Um, the buttons or, or the controller so we'll be connecting that in with the controller lines here uh, so I'm going to connect that up and then I'll move on to the, the Z-Wave controller okay now that I've gotten the 736Q tied into the, the two um, motor control or the uh, I think the, the circuit board on the mine is labeled uh, command um, I should now be able to short the input wires to control my garage door and that works now to install the Z-Wave controller I stuck to the theme of using uh, zip ties to mount my linear Z-Wave controller. I have uh, connected the power pack. I strapped that off there so the wires do not get caught into the gears and the chain. And then the dry contact output of the Z-Wave controller, I connected to the input of the 736Q. Next will be to install the door position sensor that goes along with the, the linear controller. I now have the door position sensor installed. This is very simple uh, to install. It either comes with uh, some screws or sticky tape. I have gone with the sticky tape method and I want the arrow to face up the direction the garage door will move. Um, there is a piece of plastic underneath the battery that must be removed to engage uh, the battery for operation. Also, the Z-Wave controller came with a warning label. So before your kids get crushed under the door, they should read this 
Um, the operator is equipped with an unattended operation feature. So uh, the Z-Wave controller is really nice. It has some beeping to it to kind of warn you uh, that the door is going to be coming down. So a really nice feature. Uh, but what's great about the, the position sensor and the Z-Wave controller uh, is that it lets your, uh, your alarm panel in your virtual keypad app know if the door is currently up or down um, so that you can then control the up or down status of that with a simple you know, push button um, control, uh, like a doorbell switch in a lot of older garage door controllers, there's no way for a system to know if the door is up or down. So this is uh, definitely a great feature of the Z-Wave controller. So let's get this enrolled into my alarm panel. Okay, it's enrollment time. I'm gonna to navigate to my virtual keypad app. Uh, don't look at my code. And we're back. So uh, we're going to add this as a door. So I'm going to navigate to the doors. I'm going to hit the button up top here and we're going to add a new door controller. And we're going to name this garage. Door. <laughs> Preparing to add. Press the button on the Z-Wave device. So on the Z-Wave controller, there's a button. Press that. We heard a beep. It is now adding that device. I'm just waiting here as we finalize this device. And we are good to go. Wow, that was quick. So it's currently showing the door is closed. So now that I have the Z-Wave device added, one more thing that I'm going to do is optimize the Z-Wave network. Uh, this will, uh, because this is a mesh type network, uh, we're going to rescan uh, my Z-Wave network and make sure that we have the best signal to this and all my sensors. So we'll let the optimization run and I think we're almost ready to try it out. All right, ready to try this out. Um, currently the door is open. It is showing that. And slide that to closed. The warning that the door will be closing. And as that position sensor changes, it is now changing the icon on the app to the closed position here. And there we have it. You must wait 30 seconds between uh, each activation, so you can't just uh, rapid fire control the garage door there. Uh, so in uh, 30 seconds, we'll um, give this a shot again here. Okay, about 30 seconds has gone by and we're gonna try to open the door. Again, we got the warning. And we're opening. The position sensor is going to the open status. We'll send that back to the app. And there we go. So next what I'm going to do um, is going to create a favorite, a Z-Wave favorite that controls the closing of my door. Uh, the issue I had recently was I, um, I woke up I uh, went outside and realized my door had been open all night, leaving all my precious tools, my vintage snowblower, and my drums exposed to whatever. So um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do next is create a favorite. So go to the favorites. We're going to add a new favorite. 
This favorite's going to be called Garage Closed. I'm going to use the icon of the garage door and I'm going to choose the garage door in the close status. I'm going to save that favorite. Cool, now we have a favorite called garage closed. I'm also going to create a schedule. So I want to make sure that every night that my garage door gets closed. So I'm going to do a favorite schedule. I'm going to select my garage closed favorite and I would say every day at we're going to go with um, 10 p.m. we want to verify that the garage door is closed. So I'm going to save that and now every night we make sure the garage is closed. So just to verify that my favorite works I can also activate that. So I'm going to activate the garage closed favorite and here we go. closing and momentarily we should show the close status. Here we go and we're closed. Maybe my uh, next project will be to replace the batteries in my front door. Thanks for watching.